In part one, I took a part and diagnosed my $50 Husqvarna 55 Rancher from Craigslist. It had many issues, mostly fuel related. I replaced the missing intake gasket, missing fuel pickup filter and hardened fuel line, fished a chunk of rubber out of the impulse port, added tension to the starter, replaced anti-vibe buffers, rebuilt the carb and then re-rebuilt it with a new needle assembly and tuned it for easy start, quick throttle snap, slightly ridge four stroking full speed and a reliable return to a smooth idle. Then in part two, I modified this big 32 inch bar to fit onto the Husky 55 so that I can cut near the ground without leaning over. It had a D176 bar mount for a McCulloch or an Echo, so I had to adapt it to Husqvarna small mount, also known as Oregon K095, by finding a mounting position that would fit a standard 105 drive link chain, and then using another Husqvarna small mount, 257 chain plate, as a template to mark the oil supply area, then bore new oil supply holes into the chain slot, test it for oil flow, and tune it for that big reciprocating mass. Well, the saw is running great, but I would like to add a little more power if I can. And I think the easiest way to do that would be to do what's called a muffler mod. And that's adding another port to the muffler so that exhaust can escape a little more easily and allow more air and fuel to flow through it. So to try that out, I'm gonna use this extra muffler that I bought online. If it doesn't work at all, I can always go back to the stock muffler, but I'm also gonna make it a little bit tunable or adjustable, if you will, by using these riv nuts. So a riv nut is basically a nut for, a, in this case, a 3816 bolt that can be installed from the outside. And I figure if it's too much of an opening, I can always put a bolt in there to plug it. So I'm gonna install at least two of these riv nuts into the front of this muffler. Those will work in, in conjunction with the existing ports on the side and allow a little bit more airflow. Now these riv nuts are spec'd for a thickness of 27 to 150 thousandths. For reference, here's 27 thousandths. So I think that will work just fine for the thickness of this material. What you've got to do is drill a hole of a specific size. I've got a 17 30 seconds uh, drill bit that I use just for this purpose. And then you come back and you use a RivNet tool or tool kit to install them. I've got a really simple one, just uses a couple of wrenches uh, to, uh, to crush that RivNet down and basically grab it on both sides. So I'll show that process as well. First step is to lay this out, figure out where I want a riv nut or riv nuts, and uh, maybe start with a little pilot hole. I've got three holes laid out, so I'm gonna drill some pilot holes. Now I'll drill them out to 17, 30 seconds of the riv nut once. I deburred the holes really well, and then I washed it out to remove any leftover particles. You don't want anything preventing these rib nuts from sitting flush on the inside or the outside. But now it's time to install them. So the rib nut tool that I have just uses standard bolts and this two part nut. I'll show you how it works. So it takes a seven eighths on the bottom and 11 sixteenths on top. And basically you turn them against each other and they have this coarse thread that spreads them apart with quite a lot of force. So that's what is going to crush the rib nut down. So you close it down all the way, stick one of the bolts through it, and then thread your rib nut onto that bolt. And now you're kind of like locked and loaded to do the installation. So I'll insert it in the center there. You don't want this coming up away from the surface. So that's why I like using a socket on top and a regular wrench on the bottom. The vise couldn't hurt either. But So as you start rotating them against each other, it's going to squish the other end of that nut. Just keep turning it. Then you can loosen this a little bit. That'll take pressure off of the bolt and then you can spin it out. If it's too tight, you can use a wrench, of course. If you don't want to over tighten these. You can kind of strip them. You want to get them pretty tight, but not go too far. There you go nut is installed and so it just takes a regular 3 8 16 bolt if i ever wanted to plug that all right two more to install so you can see with simple tools you can install rib nuts pretty easily husky 55 muffler three new ports in addition to the existing port and i uh, can't wait to see how well this works let's install it on the saw it'll need a little tuning to match and we'll see how it performs
Well, I gotta say, I'm pretty happy with this. Obviously, it's got a huge chain, huge bar, so it's accelerating all that mass up, so it doesn't snap super hard, but it's easy to start and it snaps pretty good. I've got it four stroking. It's just before it goes screaming. I've also played around with it to where I let off that trigger. It reliably comes back down to idle without almost dying and coming back up. And getting all that right has also let me turn down the idle to a fairly low speed so it's not super loud. Speaking of noise, I would say maybe 25% louder and uh, it's not as loud as some uh, bigger saws that I use. So noise is definitely increased but not in any sort of way that it would be a problem to run it. All right, let's find the max RPM at wide open throttle. To do that, I've got a digital tachometer. It uses these little strips of reflective tape, basically. So I use some isopropyl alcohol, cleaned off the surface of the flywheel opposite of the magnets used for the ignition, and put a length of that reflective tape down here. So then I can run the saw at full speed, and then using the tachometer, shine it down on the reflective area. I should get an RPM reading, so let's try it out. I had to hold the tachometer upside down to point at that reflective strip. We can use the memory function. Looks like our highest was 12,361 and idle of 3069. So let's get this off the bench and test it out in some real wood. Well, here I'm cutting through seasoned live oak, which is a species of red oak and one of the tougher woods you'll find cutting firewood here on the California Central Coast. At about 20 inches diameter and being dry, it's definitely giving this little saw a workout. Nonetheless, it's making good chips and good progress with just the bar weight. After all, the idea is to cut on the ground with less effort, and this combo definitely does that, albeit slowly. Cuts were remarkably consistent at 1 minute 40 seconds each. And these tests are at the upper limit of what I'll actually use the saw for. I'll let this unedited cut play to the end, but I'm calling this combo of a long bar on a light power head with a little power bump a success for my intended use. For big stuff, I can get out the 395 XP, but for limbing and bucking smaller, freshly fallen trees, this 55 will be my go-to. Look for the next video where I repair and restore the white top cover using my hot air soldering station, a headlight restoration kit, JB Weld, and chemicals from a hair salon. But in the meantime, if this was helpful or interesting to you, hit that like button, leave any questions in the comments, and thanks very much for watching.